Welcome to this workshop on control using wireless throttling valves. In this video we'll be examining the solution to the workshop contained in Chapter 6 of the book Wireless Control Foundation. In this workshop we'll initially be looking at the module that we'll be using to simulate both wired and wireless control. We will then initialize our performance index that we'll be using to measure control performance and then introduce a set point change in both, to th in both wireless and wired control. We'll then examine the integral of absolute error and number of communications for both wired and wireless control and compare those. We'll then initialize our uh, performance index again and uh, after we do that we'll introduce a disturbance change in both the flow processes for wired and wireless control and observe then the integral of absolute error and number of communications that were used in control. Uh, for this uh, workshop uh, we're simulating uh, two flow processes, one controlled by wired and one controlled wirelessly. The process that has both a wired input uh, is using PID then to adjust the wired output. The PID plus is used for control using a wireless flow measurement and its output is going wirelessly to a throttling valve and so both the input and output for the PID plus are wireless. Both the PID and PID plus receive exactly the same set point so we can compare performance. Also the flow process we're simulating we can introduce the same disturbance into both flow processes to examine then the uh, response for disturbance. This is our module that we'll be using in the workshop up in the upper portion of the wireless control. We're simulating our wireless uh, transmitter uh, PID plus then is being used. The PID has the PID plus option enabled and we're then uh, simulating then the uh, delay and uh, you notice there's an added component between the PID plus and the AO to handle the fact that we only allow action to be taken after we've got an acknowledgement of a, of a last output being received. The time to apply command is being simulated and is used then in adjusting our wireless uh, throttling valve. The uh, implied valve position that we're calculating is then used as the external reset for a PID plus. The regular PID has a wired input, wired output. We have uh, simulated uh, two flow processes that are exactly the same so we can then compare wired to wireless. So the gain, dead time, and time constant are exactly the same for both uh, processes. The performance of each uh, control, wireless and wired, are measured with our block, the performance block. We're looking at integral by absolute error and number of communications. The wireless communication is windowed communication with a dead band of 1, a periodic update of 8, and a default time of uh, 16. The, uh, uh, the communication is set up where uh, we're simulating a delay of five seconds in terms of our time to apply and uh, the uh, delayed response of three seconds, so a total of eight seconds after we change before we get an acknowledgement. The uh, process that we're using in this uh, is a very fast process, gain of one, dead time of one, and a lag of only uh, two seconds. The uh, PID plus tuning is only based upon the process dynamics. The gain is set to 1 and the reset is set to uh, 3 seconds. The regular PID for wired input, wired output is tuned exactly the same with a gain of 1 and a uh, reset of uh, 3 seconds. Uh, here we are viewing our module uh, online. For a set point of 50, you notice both the wired and wireless control are exactly at set point. We uh, can uh, change our uh, performance calculation. We can initialize it, and so that's what we're doing here. 
we initialized it starting out at a value of 0 and now we're going to introduce a set point change of 50 both into our wireless and wired control of these uh, two flow processes. In response to our set point change we notice that the wire, wireless control as well as the wired control is changing output to the valve. Uh, the processes then are reflecting that change in valve position. We can better see the dynamic response by looking at a trend. Uh, here we're seeing that we changed the set point and in response to that we notice the smooth change is the wired transmitter in PID. The stepwise change is the wireless measurement and uh, so uh, we can then examine the uh, response for a change down in set point and again uh, look at the behavior. You notice that the response is very fast both for the wired and wireless uh, and that the wireless comes exactly to the same set point and valve position as the wired. Uh, the response initially is a little bit different but overall it's very similar. The uh, delay response is only due to the communication delay to our valve. Uh, but after that initial response to the set point change we notice that we come exactly to the valve position that the wired uh, control has and that the wireless measurement as soon as it's updated we notice that we're exactly at the uh, uh, set point. Uh, the delay we're seeing here is just due to the uh, fact that we're within one percent and so it takes uh, 16 seconds the default time for that measurement to be updated. We will now, uh, in looking at the performance, we notice that the uh, performance for wired and wireless is a little bit different, uh, a little bit uh, greater integral of absolute error, but we notice that we only used nine communicated values versus over 200 for the wired uh, control. So this demonstrates that uh, with uh, PID plus we can do very effective control with very few uh, communicated values. To demonstrate the impact of a process disturbance, we'll reinitialize our uh, performance index back to zero and we'll introduce then a disturbance into both flow processes. So we'll introduce a 10% change on measured disturbance into our process. In response to that we notice the flow changes and the control then has to do its work <coughs> of work of controlling and, and compensating for that disturbance. Uh, as the impact of the disturbance starts to change our control measurement uh, we notice that the uh, PID as well as PID plus starts to take uh, control action. Again, uh, we only get a, a change in valve position as we get a new measurement. Uh, so we see a little bit of a delay in terms of the response for the wireless control. But overall, the response is very similar to it. Um, we can now introduce a um, change in the opposite direction to examine then the uh, behavior for uh, disturbance. And again, we, we notice that um, there may be a little bit of a delay in the wireless uh, control just due to the fact that we have um, a wireless measurement. As also, there's some delay in terms of the time to apply before the actual valve position changes. But after uh, this initial period here, you notice that the behavior is very similar between the wired and wireless. So we provide a very, very comparable control using a, wired a wireless measurement and a wireless uh, valve. The integral of absolute error is a little bit greater uh, for the wireless, but you notice in this particular case we only used nine communicated values versus over 200 for the wired. So uh, this just demonstrates the power of PID plus and this new uh, command, uh, the time to apply command and how it is used with a wireless valve to provide very effective control using both wired and wireless measurements. We hope this uh, exercise has been helpful to you in understanding then how uh, the new time to apply command